How is a narcissist so good at moving people right along from stranger to love interest and beyond? How do they sink their claws in so fast and never let go? And why do so many people fall victim to this? Today, I'll be discussing how a narcissist grooms their supply and how they can do this so incredibly fast. Number one, empathy. Now, hang on a minute. (laughs) One of the key signs of narcissistic personality disorder is a sheer lack of empathy. So how do they lure in so many people with something that they don't even really seem to have? Well, it's not that narcissists don't have empathy. They just don't have like authentic empathy for lack of a better way to say it. They kind of replicate it. It's called cognitive empathy. Other people call it cold empathy. Highly narcissistic people understand that in the beginning of relationships, the beginning of all this, they need to do this. They realize they need to do everything on this list. But when things first start with the person, the narcissist needs to make a supply source feel as comfortable as possible. And they have to do this with a lot of speed. They have to look non-threatening and empathy or cold empathy It's just a very good way to do this. Why? Because it builds trust. This is where all of this begins right from the start. They seem overly concerned about you, your well-being, hyper-focused on what you need, what you want, what you like. They learn everything about you. They do this quickly, as we'll see with everything on the list. They need to learn with great speed what makes you happy, but more importantly, they need to learn what makes you open up, feel comfortable, feel safe and secure, and what makes you trusting. They need to get that trust from you, and empathy is a good way to do that. Number two, love bombing. I know I don't have to spend too much time on love bombing. I've talked about it a great deal. I have a whole playlist on it here on my channel if you want to check it out. But this is where a lot of oh, it's too good to be true. This is a fantasy. This is a dream. That's where all this stuff begins to come into play. They love everything about you. They obsess over you. They just want to walk around and worship you and the ground that you walk on. Love and gifts, overwhelming time, attention, compliments, it's all lavished on you. And you'll also get bits and pieces of love bombing throughout the relationship to keep you coming back in your mind to this little part of the relationship where every day all day long is so great. But that actually taps into something else that I want to touch on a little bit later. And again, if you want more on love bombing playlist here on my channel, you're welcome to check it out. Number three, mirroring. Mirroring is a great psychological trick and it's always used in conjunction with love bombing to make this process if you can believe it, actually go faster. Mirroring is just simply what it says. They might take on some of your personality traits, some of your characteristics. They mirror you right back into your face. They hate what you hate, love what you love. Their favorite color just so happens to be yours. Mirroring can trick you into thinking you've known this person a lot longer than you actually have. But in reality, You have known this person a long time because it's essentially you. Again, it builds more trust, builds safety, security, ability to trust, but it also makes you think that all these pieces just fit together so right. I mean, this one has to be the one. Look how meant to be it is. Look how similar we are. So it's kind of doing two things at once. If you'd like to talk one-on-one about what you're going through, what you've gone through in a toxic relationship with a narcissist, you can always send an email to bookachatwithjess at gmail.com to set up private one-on-one sessions with me. Number four, some good old investigative work. And this one is actually quite sneaky. (laughs) The narcissist will begin digging around for information about you. However, it actually looks like nothing more than them asking questions and getting to know you better. And to an untrained eye, it looks like someone who has very genuine interest in you. They want to know the good, the bad, and the ugly. They're just into you and they just want every little morsel of information they can get. They might even tell you things like, well, they want to get into deeper conversations with you. It'll make them feel closer to you, more connected to you. You'll get on a higher level. And that's around the time where most of them start asking you to 
Tell them about your problems, your dreams, your fears, your goals, and so on. And again, this makes you feel like this person is really interested in you, and they are. But unfortunately, it's far more sinister than that. The narcissist takes all of this information that you're willing to give because it's nice to have someone appear to have genuine interest in you. So most people do open right up. Most people just want to be heard. And once they get a listening ear, it just all kind of comes out. So narcs take all this, they throw out what doesn't work for them, and they hold on to the things that might benefit them in the future. Things they can call back to, criticize you for, hold over your head, and so much more. Number five, the half lies and the half truths. In order for you to buy into some of the more outlandish craziness that you're going to hear in the devaluing, discarding, and hoovering phases with this person, a narcissist lies to you right from the get-go. They're blending some facts with some lies. You will never completely know what's going on. You will never know what is a flat-out truth, what is a flat-out lie, and you won't even realize in the beginning that this is happening to you, but it's exactly what the narcissist is counting on. In the beginning, trust is never higher. That's the whole thing they're after, is to get your trust and to look non-threatening. You will believe the half-truths, the half-lies, and all the other garbage in between because you won't know any better. None of us do. I certainly didn't. And this is all done now so that once you begin to catch on that everything is lies and nothing makes sense, you'll be gaslighted and or (laughs) you'll begin to gaslight yourself, second guess yourself about things that you've been told. You might even begin to make excuses for the behavior. You'll find yourself once again in the devaluing stages, constantly referencing the beginning when things were good although it was never really good because you were being lied to and abused right from the start and every other supply source is, we just don't realize it at the time. We're never sure what we're told. The half truth, the half lie, and all the other bullshit in between. Number six, codependency and trauma bonding. And this is where I want to tie in my point from when I was talking about love bombing a little bit earlier in the video. You will get bits and pieces of love bombing throughout the relationship. It won't ever be as good as the real love bombing phase in the beginning. It'll never be that good, but it's called positive intermittent reinforcement. Some people just call it intermittent reinforcement, and I'm sure there's other words for it, what have you, but this is how the trauma bond forms. A narcissist need you to be completely dependent on them. They need that codependency in you to be fueled, jealousy, insecurity. You're wanting that love bombing back and everything else. And they need to be the one who fans that flame. They need you coming back over and over despite what you're going through in those moments. Codependency and being trauma bonded are two major reasons for people staying in narcissistic relationships longer than they should, and putting up with the behavior far longer than they should, being more receptive to the Hoovers, begging for someone to come back, and the like. There's a trauma bond. There's an addiction. There's codependency. A lot of victims even get told things like, well, you can't live without me. What are you going to do without me? They're told this by the narcissist. And that can get into a lot of people's heads and mess with them. They get nostalgic. They miss the love bombing because they're getting that intermittent love. So they're waiting and riding out the shit storm, hoping for the sunset on the other side, day after day, year after year. That is a huge issue. But here's the problem. The person knows at some point they'll get a dose of the feel goods. They'll get a text, a phone call, flowers, whatever it is that they're looking for. They know it's going to come at some point. However, they are not in control of when that happens. The narcissist is the one who breadcrumbs. The narcissist is in control while they lead this person along. I'll give you something. I know exactly what you like. And I'll give you a small hit of that because I know you really need it. But I control when you get it. And I also control what you have to do to get it. All these things working together is how a narcissist 
gets people to just fall for them so quickly. This is how they groom and they master this almost flawlessly as they work on it over time with all of these techniques. If you want more awareness, education, and support on narcissistic abuse and narcissistic relationships, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. If you'd like to support my work here, there are links in the description for you to do that as well. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day, Survivor, and take care of yourself.